In a big development, India has announced its first significant discovery of reserves of lithium, a rare mineral crucial for manufacturing of electric vehicles. Lithium ion covers a very broad range of technologies. In order to power all of these EVs, we will need lithium ion batteries, lots of them. Some call it white gold. It's a critical material used in batteries, and of course demand is skyrocketing as energy companies and car makers move away from fossil fuels. Global push to EVs boosting the price of lithium to a record high in China. The India's reported discovery of 5.9 million tons of lithium in the state of Jammu and Kashmir has been welcomed by global automakers. So with this discovery, India can end its reliance on China. Hi everybody, on 9th of February 2023, the Geological Survey of India released a sensational report that could be a game changer for India. As it turns out, we have discovered 5.9 million tons of white gold in Jammu and Kashmir. Now this is not literal gold, but just like oil is referred to as the black gold of the 20th century, lithium is known as the white gold of the 21st century. Because just like oil became the bloodline of the 20th century economies, lithium is said to be the new energy reserve that will determine the super economies of the 21st century. And while most news channels only told us about the lithium discovery, very few of them actually told us about the critical business and geopolitical insights behind this discovery. So in this case study, let's try to understand what is so special about lithium that it is being called as the white gold of the 21st century? What is the geopolitics behind this lithium war? How will this new reserve discovery benefit India in the next 30 years? And what are the study materials to help you understand this lithium wars better? But before we move on, let me thank our partners Growth School, which is run by a very dear friend of mine, Webov Sisinthi. Growth School is an online learning platform that was recently ranked as the ninth best startup in India by LinkedIn. Growth School is a platform where you can learn from the top 1% of the industry professionals and acquire some extraordinary skills to compete in this hyper-competitive market. In Growth School, you can learn management consulting from Ria Chabra who works at Meta in London. You can learn data analytics from Vineet who is a senior data analyst at Uber. You can learn performance marketing which is advanced digital marketing from Deepan who has helped brands like Amazon, AirAsia, PNG and has managed $100 million in ad spends. And you can also learn product management from Sarosh, who is a product manager at Google. The best part of Growth School is the result that the students achieve. People who have completed their programs have got job and internship offers from companies like MPL, Paytm, Microsoft, Swiggy, PhonePay and many more. And now there is an application process to get into these programs. So if you are somebody who is looking to 10x your career growth, apply for these extraordinary programs at Growth School from the link in the description. And the first 100 people using my link will get a discount of 5000 rupees. The first thing we need to understand is why is lithium so important and why is it called as the white gold of the 21st century. Now people, we all know that EV and renewable energy are the future. But the single most important factor for this transition to EVs and renewables is none other than the evolution of batteries. And this is due to obvious reasons. The first one being the fact that unlike petrol that can be filled within a minute, electric vehicles have a long charging duration that could range between 30 minutes to 5 hours. So refueling is an extremely inefficient way to go ahead. So the way ahead is not to have many charging stations, but to have batteries that can last for 400 to 500 kilometers, such that they need to be charged only once in a day. This is the reason why more than energy transfer is the energy storage that will play a critical role in defining the electric superpowers of the world. And the key to this energy storage in the EV industry is none other than lithium ion battery. What is the future of cars? Uh, hydrogen uh, or definitely ele electric. Yeah, hydrogen you is know. a waste of time. <laughs> the reason we don't have a lot of helium is because it floats away. But lithium does not float away. There's lithium in, in salt form virtually everywhere. Lithium ion covers a very broad range of technologies. You can have an enormous difference in the power density and the energy density and the cycle life between one chemistry and another. In, in the time frame available, like in the next year or two years, will there be lithium in the form that, that Tesla needs, which is lithium hydroxide, um, in sufficient quantities at a price that is reasonable and does not materially affect the cost of the Model 3? But the question over here is, what is so special about lithium and why not cobalt or some other metal? Well, the first reason for this lies in this chart. This chart plots the relationship between storage of the battery and the range that it can give you. 
So here you will see that the lead acid battery's range starts saturating at 100 miles. So beyond this point, even if you increase the storage from 500 to 800 liters, which is a 60% increase, the range barely increases by 10% to 110 miles. And similar is the case with nickel metal hydride at 175 miles. But with lithium ion, you can see that as you keep on increasing the storage, the range also increases rapidly. And this range saturation just begins at 350 miles. So if an EV can achieve a range of 400 miles or 640 kilometers, that can easily suffice the automobile industry, isn't it? This is the first reason why lithium is very very important, which is the perfect balance of range and storage saturation. The second reason for lithium's value lies in the periodic table. Now if you remember, after hydrogen and helium, the lightest metal we have is lithium. So obviously it is very very light for storage. On top of that, it has an energy efficiency of over 99%, which means 99% of the energy stored in lithium ion batteries is converted into utilizable output and only 1% is wasted. Whereas if you look at the closest alternative to lithium ion, you will see that lead acid batteries have an efficiency of 70%, lithium metal batteries have an efficiency of 90% and nickel cadmium batteries have an efficiency of only 85%. Thirdly, lithium has the highest energy density, meaning it can store the highest amount of energy per kg. For example, the energy density of a typical lead acid battery is around 30 to 50 watt hours per kilogram. Nickel cadmium ranges between 45 to 80 watt hour per kg. Nickel metal hydride ranges between 60 to 120 watt hour per kg. Whereas lithium ion ranges between 50 to 260 watt hour per kg. This means that lithium ion batteries can store 3 to 8 times more energy than a lead acid battery of the same weight. Hence, lithium ticks all three boxes which are weight, energy efficiency and energy density. And lithium is so so superior in the market right now that scientists believe that there is no alternative to this battery system for the next 10 to 15 years. So in short, the country that has lithium will command a very very strong hold over both geopolitics and the economics in world trade for the next two decades. If this is very very clear to you, let's come to the geopolitics of lithium. The way the lithium industry is developing looks very similar to the beginning of the oil boom. Lithium is shaping geopolitics just like oil. We have what some have described as the Saudi Arabia of lithium here in the state of California. Three other countries too have considerable amounts of lithium. Like the United States with 6.8 million tons, Australia with 6.3 million tons and China with 4.5 million tons. Now it is estimated that there are 80 million tons of lithium resources in the world with 80% of the known lithium deposits just in four countries which are Argentina, Bolivia, Chile and Australia. And this region at the intersection of Argentina, Bolivia and Chile contains the largest known lithium reserves in the world because of which this region is now known as the South American Lithium Triangle. But you know what guys, the most surprising fact of all is that the market of lithium supply is not dominated by any of these four countries and the actual leader of this market turns out to be China. And India is so much dependent on China for lithium batteries that 70% of our supply comes from China. So the question is, how the hell is this even possible? For this, let us take a step back and you tell me something guys. Now that you have watched so many geopolitical case studies of Think School, you tell me if such a valuable energy resource is present in such large quantities and that too in those countries that are not so economically strong, what does it indicate? It indicates that either they could form a powerful cartel and become super rich countries like Saudi and UAE or it indicates that the big daddies of geopolitics will use these countries as puppets to win the global trade war. Right? Well, guess what? China already has a very, very tight control over these lithium mines. To tell you about it, China's Tianqi Lithium is the second largest shareholder in SQM, which is a very established Chilean mining company. China's Gangfeng Lithium Company controls 51% of an Argentinian lithium project that has been developing with Lithium Americas Corporation. On top of that, Chinese companies have also invested in Bolivian lithium reserves. And China also holds a 51% stake in the world's biggest hard rock lithium mine at Green Bushes in Western Australia. So clearly, China although does not have lithium reserves, it controls those entities that control the reserves in the South American Lithium Triangle and even Australia. 
This is one of the major reasons why we are more dependent on China than South America. And as of today, we import raw materials worth 170 crores and 8,800 crores worth of lithium batteries from other countries with 70% of our lithium battery dependence only on China. But here's where something crazy happened, where we ourselves found white gold in India. India has literally hit the jackpot. The Geological Survey of India has found 5.9 million tons of lithium reserves in Jammu and Kashmir's Riyasi district. With this discovery, India can end its reliance on China. Lithium ion battery technology is said to be the best right now, which is why every country is trying to set up solid lithium supply chains. This is going to be a game changer for India. Now the question is, if we have found such a huge lithium reserve in India, does it mean that we are no longer dependent on China? And does it mean that we are going to go on to become the electric superpower of the world? Well, not really guys. Why? Because number one, this is just the G3 survey, which might have a lot of inaccuracies. And secondly, having lithium and using lithium are two very, very different things. And there's a very, very critical process that is required to turn lithium into an actual lithium ion battery. And this is what it looks like. Firstly, the necessary mineral ores are extracted and the ore goes through a strict processing and refining procedure for greater purity. Then, the specialized battery components are made which includes cathode and anode materials, electrolytes, separators and casings. After that, the integration is done into the battery pack with all electronics and sensors. And after all this process is done, finally, these battery packs are integrated into an EV. But even then, the cycle doesn't stop. There is also a reverse supply chain whereby lithium batteries are also recycled in a factory and again reused. And all these processes require a huge capital infrastructure and super high-tech machines to master. And not so surprisingly, China has already invested so heavily into lithium infrastructure that today, out of 200 lithium-ion battery mega factories, 148 of them are present only in China. Out of the top 10 lithium battery manufacturers in the world, 6 of them are located in China. And you will be shocked to know that out of 107 lithium battery manufacturers in the world, 102 of them are based in China. And if you look at where India stands, we are far, far away. India has no expertise in mining, refining or processing lithium. So even if we set up factories today, it will take us another 5 to 9 years just to get a hold over this market. And while China has all type of factories and infra, India has only one lithium refining factory which is yet to be completely started. Secondly, India does not have the expertise in lithium recycling either. And currently, we have less than 1% capability to actually recycle lithium. So the only two processes that we have a hold of are lithium ion cell and battery pack manufacturing. But even these acts that we are doing, we are doing it in collaboration with China and other countries. For example, Munod Industries Limited is a Chennai-based group that has a joint venture with China's Tianjin Lishin battery joint stock company for lithium ion cell manufacturing. Similarly, XR Industries is setting up a lithium ion cell manufacturing facility in Bengaluru in collaboration with Swolt Energy China. Thirdly, a battery manufacturing facility is being set up in joint venture with a Switzerland-based company called Le Clanche. Lastly, Japanese companies like Toshiba, Suzuki and Densu, they are setting up a battery manufacturing factory in Gujarat and Tata has a similar factory in Gujarat for recycling. So clearly, we need more and more companies with either their independent capabilities or with support from a reliant ally. So the question is, what is the Indian government doing to fix this problem? And this brings me to the last part of the episode and that are the government policies and the study materials to help you understand this lithium race better. The first policy that we have is on getting rid of customs duties. So in this year's budget, the Indian government announced that it is giving out customs duty exemption to the import of capital goods and the machinery that is required for manufacturing of lithium ion cells. This is a very good push for the manufacturing of lithium ion cells, but I'm not sure if this is enough. On the other hand, customs duty on premium vehicles that has come in completely built units that has been hiked to 70% to increase a barrier to entry for foreign products. Secondly, our finance minister also announced something called the viability gap funding for battery energy storage system projects with a capacity of 4000 megawatt hour. This is nothing but a form of financial support for infrastructural projects undertaken through the PPPs and as the name suggests, it is meant to make these products market viable. And under this policy, the government of India provides total viability gap funding up to 20% of the total project costs. 
Thirdly, we have the PLI scheme, and lastly, we had the Fame2 subsidy program with a budget outlay of 10,000 crores in April 2019, and this was to subsidize 7,000 electric buses, 5 lakh electric three-wheelers, 55,000 electric passenger vehicles, and a million electric two-wheelers. And now, for 2023-24, we have allocated 5,172 crores for this scheme. So now what remains to be seen is how much lithium can we actually extract, how quickly can we prepare to extract value out of this lithium reserve, and most importantly, how can we use this reserve to establish a dominant position in the world economy. This is the story behind the discovery of lithium, its geopolitics, the business wars, and India's position in this lithium race. And now you may have a look at all the study material. That's all from my side for today, guys. We are very, very close to 3 million. So if you learned something valuable, please make sure to hit the like button in order to make YouTube Baba happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye. And don't forget to check the link in the description if you want to learn, upskill, and 10x your career growth.